Is the so-called war on women over or resurging? This week, Democrats once again accused the GOP of waging a war on women, this time for the delay in passing an anti-trafficking bill. Democrats blame a Republican ban on federal funds for abortions hidden in the bill for the delay. They're also furious over the protracted confirmation hearings of Loretta Lynch, who is slated to become the first black female attorney general. But Republicans, including TTC panel, Kellyanne Conway and Sabrina Schaefer at an event this week titled War No More said the war is over and don't expect a repeat during the next election. Potential GOP presidential candidate Carly Fiorina charged Democrats marginalize Republican women. Emily's List, the pro-abortion women's group, came out and described Joni Ernst, a sitting senator, a mother, a wife, a veteran, as window dressing. Okay, so um, from a PR perspective, from a strategic sure. sp perspective, if you hold a news conference and say the war is over, isn't that admitting to the public that there was this war? No. And and then there can be a debate out over whether it's over or not. I don't. I don't know. I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't think there's been an admission. I think there's there's talk, and I think this was a dialogue. The War No More panel, which unfortunately I was sad to miss you at, but I think it was a perfectly good venue to have people like our our leaders, Kathy McMorris Rogers, who's been a champion of of women's issues within the House. She's a chair of the GOP conference, and I think it's a dialogue about what we can be as a Republican Party. We can be champions for women's issues, which are everyone's issues. Um, I would love to see that happen, unfortunately. That's not the reality of what we're dealing with. The war on women is something that has existed for a very long time, and it is still very much in effect. And this idea that it's stale, that it's not going to work um, in the next election cycle, well, the reality is that even if you look at some of the, the races in the most recent election where Senate seats were lost from Democrats to Republicans, the margin of loss was much smaller where there was a heavier message focusing on women's reproduction rights. I'm specifically talking about North Carolina. And so that's something to look at. The tide was with Republicans last election, but this is an area where they are vulnerable. Uh, the War No More, the reason it's called that, I didn't name it, but I understand why they call it that, is to say that this whole cynical ploy to talk to women from the waist down only has failed. It failed miserably in 2014, where there were not close races in places like Colorado, where the Denver Post of all places withdrew their endorsement from incumbent Democratic Senator Mark Udall and called him Mark Uterus because he basically was a one-note Johnny, he got 39% of the mail vote. So not only did women reject it, not only is Cory Gardner now the U.S. Senator from Colorado because he took on Mark Udall on this issue and others, but men resented it and rejected it. Same thing with the aforementioned Joni Ernst, yes, first woman to ever represent Iowa in Congress, a pro-life female Republican who uh, got, kept Bruce Braley to 40% of the mail vote. So. I think if Mrs. Clinton runs on this in 2016, this, this sort of abortion contraception, you even heard in the, in the context of this panel today, the obsession with abortion, even when it's not an issue that she raised, is so myopic that it's almost the only language they speak. Yeah, I mean, I actually agree if Hillary runs or in, in the Democratic conversation, it'll be even broader than choice issues. But I think this week we saw an example of how it's Republicans who are fixated on abortion since they're holding up a sex trafficking bill because of abortion which is restrictions. Very bi which is a very bipartisan. bipartisan bill. They're holding that up because of abortion language. Abortion abortion restriction bills have been at the top of the agenda. So I'm sorry, it's not the Democratic Party obsessed with abortion and all these issues. It's the Republican Party who have a majority now and want to sneak abortion restrictions and language and bills that have nothing to do with it. Why did Sex they spend $100 million in the last election? Why won't Who's Mitch obsessed? McConnell <laughs> take the abortion language out million. and pass the sex trafficking bill, a bill which many Republicans have supported? But he won't take the language out. Why won't he? Who's obsessed with abortion then? Not Why not? So, so, uh, for for that looking matter. forward in 2016, <laughs> is, 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 is this battle going to keep going? And it's not just in the national legislature mm -hmm. and Congress, so. it's also at the state level. As Aaron mentioned, there are three Republican state legislatures that have passed bills saying you can't use, uh, you can't use, uh, medical abortion chemical abortions so is that going to keep going and I will it be will it be a winner for for uh, which party 
in, no party is going to win on this because when there's hypocrites on both sides, unfortunately, <laughs> and with the uh, Democrats doing so, I think that that's a big issue. All right, we're out of time. That's it for this edition. Please follow me on Twitter and visit our website.